it's great to have you here on the White Owl Talk series. The purpose of this series is to learn important life lessons that uh, young people can emulate. So, growing up, what are the core values which help shape the person you are today? So, in my case, uh, I was not the brightest kid in the in the school, in the class. Although I used to come, maybe one of the top three ranks. But one thing which has helped me continuously is the hard work. So I know that whenever I have given my my full input, I have got uh, the good output back. And in my case, whenever I was like slacking, uh, I didn't actually do well. So that's how I got to know that I am not a born genius, but I know how to become uh, good by hard working. Okay, so hard work is a core value. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, are there any other core values? Other values, you know, uh, I think the integrity and honesty, uh, which actually takes someone very, very long. So in life, uh, one can always achieve success by taking shortcut. But uh, in my case, uh, you know, even my upbringing, I never saw even my parents or people around me taking shortcuts. And same thing uh, happened in professional life for me as well. Uh, I've come to realize that Whatever goes up pretty quickly, falls down pretty in the same order, you know, with the same speed. So if you build your foundation well, you value people you work with, uh, the partners, customers, and uh, with all honesty and integrity, then it actually becomes a good foundation for you to build something meaningful. And that is my other principle, that how do you treat your stakeholders uh, that will be projection of your future success. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of um, people who've done startups, um, many founders choose to take a break and enjoy the fruits of their labor, but you decided to keep your personal capital and you started Yulu. So what was your motivation to keep going? Yeah. So earlier my plan was to actually go and retire when I was about to turn 40. Hmm. At the same time you do introspect, uh, what does, for example, even early retirement means to you? And I realized that, you know, I'm just way too young. Even I'm 40 years, uh, or I was 40 years a few years ago. Uh, that's not, uh, I see myself, uh, my day-to-day -day life. And after some introspection, talking to my mentors, I realized that there's a joy of giving back to the society. And that's where I decided to pick up a social problem. And uh, in the case of Udo, we are trying to solve for traffic congestion and air quality. Uh, both of the problems are very, very big in big cities of India. So I thought that there would be some solution uh, which can solve these two problems. And that's how Udo journey started. Okay, Yulu has an inspiring mission. I think the tagline of Yulu was moving India towards a sustainable future. Yeah. So many founders pick areas which are hot, like um, uh, they they raise uh, because raising money is easy, or they have a quick exit, or just because it's uh, fashionable. So why yeah. did you choose an area that is complex and needs a bit of focus on the execution part? Yeah, very good question. First of all, uh, see, there is nothing wrong in picking up the fancy topic either, because ultimately you can say there's a lot of tailwind. So if you pick up this area, there's a possibility of you also achieving success. Yeah. At the same time, uh, at least for me and my other co-founders, we were more driven by the pain rather than the opportunity. We saw the pain becoming an opportunity if you was down the line. So that's how we approach this world. I am actually personally a big fan of doing a startup which you can associate yourself with. I do think that because let's say fintech is or AI is cool, but you're not deeply connected with that pain point. So if you do that, you will enjoy maybe for a year or two, and then some new fashion will come up and you suddenly will go after that. And I don't think that one can build a, a startup with potentially a, can create a large impact by switching your journey all the time. So you need to know the larger north and that happens when you are very clear and 
deeply excited about that prob problem statement. And uh, uh, that's how at least we picked up our journey. We think that this problem is going to take a lot of pain, a lot of effort, and it justifies the, the combined uh, throughput from the team side, like uh, their four co-founders, for example, at Udo, each one of us is now 40 years plus, reasonably accomplished, I would say. And for us, it's a big mission. So we don't, we don't see some shortcut to the success. We know that there will be a lot of pains, but we are excited about making an impact. And I, I believe that if we are able to uh, get to the solution set, which we have been working on, um, our world will be a better place to live. And that will be our motivation to work hard and give all, all, of, all of our uh, energies and whatever we have right now. As you were growing up, did you have any uh, role models? Actually, plenty. Uh, but uh, I think back then, the world was not that global. So right now you have access to a lot of personalities across the globe. You can literally track them on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, for example, currently I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. Uh, I think he has this vision, uh, able, ability to think something really, really big and pursue that. Back then you were inspired by people around you. Uh, certainly in my case, I was fascinated with the work happening in science so I used to look up to even Abdul Kalam, who was back then was a scientist. Mm -hmm. And uh, some more for personalities, you, you, you keep on learning and, and reading about them. Can you tell us a bit about how, for example, Abdul Kalam helped you um, become who you are today? So first of all, an interesting uh, story. Uh, so he has been, you know, um, very fascinated with his journey and uh, what he has been doing for the science part. He made us uh, believe something which was again back then not possible. So India was, uh, we, we, not, we, we didn't see like a lot of technical breakthrough. So his work particularly was very inspiring. But the meta point was that I, I have been inspired by people who are able to see through things 10 years down the line. Yeah. And that they have patience to work towards that. And the interesting one was when I was graduating, he was actually the chief guest. So my graduation ceremony, I had the privilege of uh, taking my degree from him, oh, wow. which was very fascinating. And then uh, I was also excited about the Amul man, Mr. Korean, yeah. uh, who transformed the country in a meaningful manner. Uh, and there are actually a lot of such examples, at least in my case, where I saw people just working with a very uh, deep motivation to transform the country and they work tirelessly over you know over a decade or so yeah do you hire millennials at yulu and do you feel that they contribute differently at work than uh, say people you hired at in Mobi? so uh, answer is actually yes and this is by the way uh, no difference maybe when we started in Mobi, our ability to hire millennials was very low because we started the journey in 2007. Yeah. Now it's 2020, I, you know. But the thesis remains same. Uh, when we look at hiring, we look at attitude, ability to learn, and then post that the skill set comes at the last. So within Mobi also, most of our initial hires were people who were just fresh out of college. Uh, they did not have any sector uh, experience because mobile advertising was a new topic. So uh, there were none. So we were able to get people who were truly passionate, driven by our, our vision. And then they were able to give all of them, all of that what they had. Same thing with Yulu, where this whole smart mobility or whatever we have been doing, electric mobility is a reasonably new topic. Uh, so we actually were able to pick up some very bright people and then they have been able to run the show. Uh, they learned what is whole thing about mobility. How do you solve this complicated problem? So our average age of the team is, I think, around 25. Uh, so except for four of us who are like 40 years plus, 
uh, most of the team is very, very young. To an extent that we don't have, if you understand, by the way, the organization hierarchy. So we don't have any director, we don't have any VP, you know, none. So we have a bunch of young professionals who have been working with us over la from, from a last two, three years period. And, uh, you know, we have been able to groom them and they have been performing very, very well. So we are very happy about it. Uh, what kind of values do you appreciate in your co-workers? So one thing which we appreciate a lot is the ownership where uh, irrespective of what role you are playing in the company or how senior or junior you are. But the act is you have taken up something and you are treating as your biggest responsibility. Yeah. So we have seen that there are people who may come back and tell you that why this cannot be done and they will have 10 reasons. And then there are people who will say, I don't care. I will just get the work done. Yeah. And then they do that work, not just the, for the tick mark. They do that with the right amount of quality and auto, uh, right amount of rigor. So what happens that once you have these kinds of talent and, and people in the team, then you're not micromanaging. Yeah. So for example, we are living in this time when everyone is working remotely. We don't have to go and spoon feed or micromanage. Yeah. We know for sure that if someone has committed that this work will be taken care, we know for sure that unless they are getting stuck, and they do by the way, and then they will ping and they'll ask for help, which is okay. But you'll never have on the day of the review that, oh, I could not complete it because I had this problem. Yeah. So ownership is an important element, which certainly is coupled with the fact that they were driven, they are intelligent enough to you know, solve tough problem. Um, and ownership just makes them super valuable. Yeah. Okay. And after that, you know, the softer part where they are generally nice human beings, uh, you know, uh, people work in team and it's important for you to have the right chemistry. Yeah. And, and uh, if there's a certain amount of negativity or strain, then it is very, very difficult for the team or the company to function. Yeah. So the cultural fit is the second most important aspect when you are putting up the team together. Now what, according to you, would be the skills that young people need to, dev uh, to be able to compete in the 21st century with other companies? I think word has changed a lot for sure. Uh, and in the context of India, when I was growing up uh, in the worldly life, a handful of career tracks one can pursue. So if you uh, become engineer, you become doctor, or you get into the banking service. So they were like very known, some six, seven uh, career tracks. Yeah. But now there are at least 50 odd career tracks. Uh, you can be a photographer and will have a huge respect in the society. Or you can be a painter, you can be a coach, uh, you know, teaching kids uh, uh, music or, or some sports. And all of this is now being looked upon with a very high degree of respect, which I think was not the case. I'm also hoping that, you know, probably you might have heard about the new education policy. So India probably will be implementing a new framework uh, in education system where, uh, you know, it's okay for you to not like maths. It's okay for you to not like maybe uh, physics. That's absolutely all right. I'm actually very uh, excited about those proposed change where truly we will be able to celebrate uh, someone's, uh, uh, you know, deep interest in a topic. And it can be in pure sciences, maths, humanities, arts, anything. Now, coming to your question, you know, what, you know, the young kids uh, or generation which is now going into college, I think the same old principle that <clears throat> if you are able to find uh, what are you passionate about? And then are you able to give your 100% or 200% for that? I think something magical will happen.
Yeah. I don't think that our new century or, or you know next decade, uh, you want to become something which a machine can do. Yeah. So, you know, if machine can do some computation, you better stay away from that. You should know how to tell to machine that do this. So there's no fun. Which means that the importance of different subjects which were earlier kept in silos, that will actually go away. They all will be coming together. And people who will be able to connect the dots, they will be highly successful. Yeah. People who will know how to deal with other individuals. You know, one of the challenges with uh, this new age uh, social networking or media, we basically claim to have thousands of friends, yeah. but actually we don't have any friend, right? In, in a true manner. So there's a risk which at least current generation has where the physical connections, which at least we had in our time. So that is kind of lacking. And uh, uh, you don't want to stretch it. You want to make sure that there's a human element towards everything, whatever we are doing. And then your ability to connect dots uh, between different topics. I think if you are able to do that, uh, you will be very, very successful. Yeah. And uh, it's a very difficult question, by the way, for me to even foresee what's coming next to you guys, like your generation. But as long as you are, you have this agility in your thinking, the way you approach things, um, I think it will be absolutely wonderful uh, for you to groom yourself the way opportunities are being created. Yeah. I think a lot of people going into college um, are not clear on what exactly it is they want to do. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I sometimes interview people who are now 30 years, sometimes 40 years. They don't know what to do. Oh. So <laughs> but what, I'll let you finish your what, question. What advice would you like to give those so, people? As I said, don't worry. Sooner you're able to find your true calling, better it is. I think I must acknowledge that uh, everyone has to have a means to live their life, uh, which is a financial path. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you cannot escape that. And if you can club your passion and you know how to make money, that's a golden thing. And this is, you know, a big, big thing from Steve Jobs all the time, where if you do what you love, then you have found the, you know, the Nirvana situation in my head. But I don't think that everyone will be able to do that uh, early in the, in the life. Uh, things are still evolving. But clearly, uh, the way India has progressed, and anyway, India is not the only playground which we need to be, you know, bird is our playground. Wherever across the globe where your passion and your work, which is basically passion and profession, they can come together, then you are sorted. Yeah. And there's no limit to, by the way, the success, everything is a relative term. Uh, so as long as you know how to enjoy whatever you have achieved uh, and have ambition to do better, yeah. I think that's good enough. But how do you say that you would find what it is you like to do? So it's, it's like, you know, uh, you achieved, I'm just making it up, right? So you got into a, a college of, uh, of your dreams. Yeah. Let's say Stanford, right? After that, probably you will have a dream of to work for Google. And when you get to Google, you have a dream of working on some, some new age AI, maybe this flying car, right? It's, it keeps on growing. Your ambitions are never ending. And I think it should be the case. If once you say that, oh, my ambitions are over, then there's no excitement. Yeah. Right? So you evolve or your dreams evolve and uh, you have this always you know hunger for or curiosity to to learn something new to achieve something new not to forget profit you know with highest amount of integrity and honesty uh, to not take shortcut that's the most important thing okay that's great my last question was with all the experience you've had so far working with in inmobi and now starting your uh, own startup, what, uh, what are the life principles that are emerging? Yeah, clearly. So 
this is a famous one from from Bill Gates, by the way, where he says that we tend to overestimate what we can achieve in a couple of years, and we tend to heavily underestimate what one can achieve in ten years. Yeah, uh, I have seen that uh, with a movie journey, for sure, professionally, and then I think the same theory will happen with Yulu also. That's why when we started Yulu. we had this notion of 10 years and i think if one has this milestones in in their life that uh, this is how i want to see myself uh, trust me it is very difficult saying is easy but uh, it is extremely difficult but somehow with the help of your parents your friends your mentors your role models if you can have some hypothesis some thesis about yourself and you work towards that i think it will be very very good yeah so from my perspective uh there are building blocks of me as as my personality uh i am generally very optimistic so uh, that keeps me going and then when you are optimistic you know you are driven towards solving a problem which you don't see or others don't see yeah. so that has helped uh, at least uh, me in in my own life journey and it keeps me going that's great thank you so much for joining us today on uh, the vital talk series i'm sure many young people can benefit from uh, the question that you answered today and uh, we wish you all the best with you thank you varun and wish you all the best it's a pleasure to and- interact with you and i'm sure that your work uh, the compilation of stories you are working on will inspire a lot of uh, students and your fellow kid your your, your friends thank so you so much bye bye